When working in 3D, there are many opportunities to drive yourself insane, and none is more able to do that than working with cameras and understanding how to get around this pretend world that you're creating. Well, Poser has a lot of cameras to make that much easier, but they can be frustrating if you don't know how and when to engage them, where you find all the cameras, why you would want to choose them, and then how to use them pretty effectively to get through your scene. The first place that we'll want to find cameras is obviously over on the left-hand side where we have camera controls. But before we start playing with those, let's look at all the camera options we have available to us. And by options, I mean cameras in the scene. If we come up to the display menu pull down, click on it, and go to camera view, we'll have a list of all the what I'll call regular cameras in the scene. There are plenty to work with. To just make sure things are positioned in space correctly, we have our left, right, top, bottom, front, back. Those are cameras with no perspective that always view from the same side. We have a main camera, which is what the scene defaults to when you open up. You have the ability to add extra cameras to your scene, and those are always dolly cameras. It's like they're sitting on a tripod, and you can move them around your scene, animate with them, render out of them. But for the most part, you've got the main camera. The other one that's used quite frequently is the posing camera, and that just allows you to maybe not change the way your view or your scene is framed in the camera, but if you want to start changing how bodies are moved or something like that, leave the main camera where it is, switch to the posing camera, which also views in perspective, and then start working with your scene. Finally, there's the auxiliary camera. In some softwares, this is called a director's camera. If I engage this, we get removed from our scene, and it always appears from kind of this top angle. You can change where it is at the scene, but this is kind of a nice sanity reset to go, okay, I can see what's going on. We've got a light showing up over here, and as we add more objects to the scene, it's also able to show you where those are and just kind of do, again, a sanity check. I do want to call your attention to the keyboard shortcuts. We'll be using these more and more as we go through the scene to flip between cameras quickly and efficiently so we don't have to keep grabbing the camera controls or moving things in and out. Since this tutorial series is being put together on a Mac rig, I've got a Command M to return to the main camera. On the PC, that will be the Control M. So if I release the mouse, we come back to exactly where we are right there. Other ways to access the camera controls, right-clicking on your mouse will bring up the contextual menu. It gives you many options, but the cameras are one of them down here. There's something different about this camera list that wasn't present in the display camera list, and that is as we progress down to the bottom, we also have the ability to look through lights in our scenes and see where they're pointed. This is really, really helpful when you're wanting to make sure things are pointed just right. Since I have the mouse over the shadow cam 2 light, if I click on that, we're looking through that light now, and we see exactly how it's pointing in the scene. The shadows, of course, always give you a little heads up to where the lights are setting in the scene, but this is a fantastic way to go ahead and orient those to your subject matter. I'll use my keyboard shortcut Command-M or Control-M to return to the main camera in the scene. Let's take a look over here at the camera controls. There's some great tools to jump in and out of views that you'll use real regularly. The face camera is one of those. So We've got a dynamic menu that's going on up here as we roll over some of these other cameras that let you know which ones they are. Self-explanatory. Face cam lets you zoom in, adjust expressions. Hand cameras will go ahead and let you come in and adjust grips, those type of things. And then the little icons change right here so we can see that if you click on it repeatedly, you'll orbit through all the cameras in your scene. If you get lost, you can just keep clicking until you get to the one you want or use the keyboard shortcut and we're back to the main camera. With the camera that's selected for the main camera, or a posing camera, or a dolly camera, you can use these little hands down here to go ahead and confine the motion of the camera to whatever the little contextual menu up here says, or the dynamic one. The move X, Y is left and right, if you're thinking of a graph grid, X left and right, Y up and down. Then we have Y and Z, which allows us to go ahead and move up and down, but then if we move the mouse left and right while holding that, we zoom in and out of our scene. We do have a little trackball, which allows us to kind of orbit around or control the camera in 3D space. Now, there's something going on here that I want to call your attention to when you start working with the cameras. In the lower right-hand corner is an orbit selected mode. This forces the camera that we're using right here, the main camera, and let me be very specific, 
This only works with cameras that aren't pre-designated to rotate around a specific object. For example, the face camera is hardwired to rotate around the face. You can't change that with this little orbit tool. But for the main camera, for the posing camera, those types of cameras, if this is enabled, and you'll see it enabled because there's a little highlighted arrow, it's also up here in the interface, it shows up like this. If I happen to select a foot by directly clicking on it, and then I use this little rotation trackball, the scene is going to rotate around that selected object if the orbit control is on. If it's off, like I just clicked on it and now the little circular arrow is no longer there, it will rotate around the center of the scene, the X, Y, and Z zero points in the scene. So just to be aware of that. Also, if you happen to zoom into your scene, and let's go ahead and do that. I'll bring the camera in and say, wow, this isn't where I want it. How do I go ahead and zoom it back in on the neck, for example? What we can do is simply come up here, choose a body part. I'll choose neck and use this great little tool, which is frame selected object. It can be a body part. It can be an entire character. So when I click on that, our camera will center on the selected object in the scene. Now I selected the neck, but if we go ahead and come back and choose the whole body for our character, Sam, and choose the frame selected object, that pops back into the scene. Really great way to regain control of your scene if you happen to lose that. There are some further keyboard shortcuts to maneuver around the scene, which will prevent you or preclude the need to go ahead and jump back into these controls all the time, and we'll deal with those in some movies coming up as we begin working on our projects.